Abba, kilo le tobe. Ah, esi waro yoro yoro for twelve hours. Abba, e beru alone. Lawyers were sleeping inside the court. Even those of us that were watching, we were sleeping. Taraye, <laughs> people were going in and out. Umbati di romo. What's up, Jare, my people? It's your girl, Adiola. Move closer, Adiola, like looking delicious. I know. Finally, the day came for our judiciary to decide who won the last presidential election in Nigeria. And it wasn't just Nigerians that were watching. People were watching from different parts of Africa, different parts of the world. You know, everybody wanted to know who the impossible be possible in Nigeria. People were watching and as many of us knew it would play out. <laughs> it was a town hall. The friend from what? Bala Blue. Alahaji Bala Ahmed Tinobu was declared the legal winner of the 2023 presidential election. The five justices of the Court of Appeal unanimously indeed affirmed the declaration of Bola Ahmed Tinobu as president of Nigeria. We shall stand. See, we knew, I mean, who did, I mean, was anybody surprised? I mean, it has never happened in Nigeria that a sitting president will be removed and they will put in a new one. I'm not saying that it cannot happen. I'm just saying, probably not under this government that we have right now. But a lot of Peter will be and Atiku supporters were hoping for their candidate to be declared winner. However, they were told, for example, that there is no law in Nigeria that mandates INEC to transmit election results electronically. Also, the government said that Labour Party did not provide any evidence to prove that Tinubu was convicted in the U.S. As it is, Peter Obi has rejected the verdict of the tribunal and he says that he will be heading to the Supreme Court. It is my intention as the presidential candidate and intention of Labour Party to challenge this judgment by way of appeal immediately as allowed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The responsibility now falls on the Supreme Court. Do you think the outcome will be different? But you know, I just wish we had paid attention to the man of God in Lagos. That is a bishop. He already told us what would happen. On that judgment day, you know, he said that they would go to court and Peter B will be declared the winner and then Osimajo will be offered the presidential seat. I saw Peter will be arrested and detained by DSS. I saw Peter will be crying. Red eye in tears, proper tears. The day for swearing him to Nubu will come. While at that event, military men will come in and they will arrest Tunubu. Mark my word. <laughs> at that point, an interim government will rule Nigeria and they will ask who should be put on the throne. Buhari will say, I'm done. I'm for peace. And he will say, Make Oshibajo. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. Actually, the man of God said so many things, you know, that uh, they are too big for my mouth. The interim government will not be long. No. The interim government will not be long. And after a while, a court will declare will be as winner of the election. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. Will you stop laughing? <laughs> we used to fluff. I'm so sorry. Why is it that these men of God don't get tired? I mean, nobody is disputing that God spoke to you, but sometimes it's just for you, for your, for your information. It doesn't mean you have to go and <laughs> broadcast for everybody. But I think some of these men of God feel a sense of importance if people can say ah, they hear from God. So they constantly want us to know they hear from God, and then when they don't hear from God, it's like they come up with their own. <laughs> <laughs> with your own prophecy. Well, anyway, sorry about that. Um, how's the man of God doing, by the way? Um, I heard that he was allegedly <laughs> accused of a uh, rape. You know that he raped two women like that. Okay, let's move on. So as expected, people started protesting. <laughs> I mean, how do you guys feel about this judgment? You know, do you think that it was free and fair? I mean, I can see some of you looking sad across the screen. It's okay. Ah, let me cheer you up. Especially those of you that are losing faith in our judiciary. Okay, remember that Kogi senatorial election and all the drama that Uncle Bodaya acted just to prevent Natasha Aputi from winning the senatorial election. Remember that time? Including destroying five roads the day before the election to prevent people from voting for Natasha Aputi. 
Kuti. As you can see, there is a big gully that has been dug using excavators, thereby cutting movement through. So what this means is, INEC will not be able to get materials to certain communities, especially my hometown. Of course, of course, the result of that election was rigged. In fact, Natasha won and we had announced that she won and then they came back and they said, oh, she didn't win. It was very, very sad. But ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to inform you that on Wednesday, the election petition tribunal sitting in Lokoya has declared your very own lady, Auntie Natasha Akpoti, who do her the winner of the Kogu Central Senatorial Election. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up, my people. Ladies and gentlemen, Auntie Natasha is now a lawmaker. <laughs> Huge congratulations to the people of Kogi Centra and huge congratulations to Auntie Natasha herself. And I learned a huge lesson from this woman to never ever give up in the face of intimidation, even from those who are powerful. And hopefully we'll start seeing more women representation among our lawmakers, among our governors, and someday a female president. Amen, somebody. Now you're on our Plasma TV, Auntie Natasha. <laughs> You've been doing well before getting into politics. You've been fixing roads, not just in Kogifa, even federal roads. You've been empowering young people left and right. You know, that is why people love you. Now that you are a politician, do not forget why people love you and why they elected you. Please do well by the people. It's a mandate, just as we also have the mandate to talk, you know? If you don't do well, we will do what? We will talk about it. But if you do well, oh, we'll be more than happy to do what? To talk about it. Amen, somebody. So, therefore, go go about time. So not Nikwe era control on Esidada. Do well by the people. How is Uncle Bodaya ya by the way? Bodaya ya belo. I can only imagine. Sorry for you in case you're watching. <laughs> because you've been acting as if you are God. Somebody said that he's now focusing on his goal of becoming the next president of Nigeria. I said the devil is like. <laughs> It's not going to have a call. But real quick, guys, can we talk about the weeks of our lawyers and judges? You know, there is no way you watch people for 12 hours and not notice that. What is this thing that they are carrying on their head? No offense. <laughs> I mean, by now, everybody knows the reason that they started wearing these powdered wigs in Europe. It was because some big people caught syphilis and they were too ashamed to show their bald head. That's one of the symptoms of the disease. As well as terrible smells from their bodies so that's why they actually call it powdered wigs because they will add some powder that was smelling good and they will add perfume to the wig so that's why they call it powdered wigs so they started wearing wigs so made with horse hair, goat hair, you know, and soon lawyers copied it and all the big, big people in the society because it became a sign of the elite, you know, <laughs> the important people, <laughs> VIPs. But if truly we are now independent and we don't have syphilis, syphilis, why are our lawyers expected to continue wearing blonde? It's not even black. It's, the thing is blonde. How can grown African men be wearing blonde wig? Am I be no but could you are one now ah can we come up with something african some kind of african uniform even if you want to wear wigs you know can it be afro or can it be black at least blonde is not cutting it i know that women can rock it at least yes i know that but for grown men for a black man an elderly black man <laughs> Not to be wearing blonde hair it's just another banger you know especially when you don't have syphilis so <laughs> <laughs> what are you hiding? And some of these men were sweating under this. Ah, I said that it to you alone. Why are you doing this to yourself? Please let me know what you guys think about our lawyers wearing wigs, you know? And real quick, Grace of Free of Lifeguard International is building another luxury apartment in Lakaway Golf Course that you can own and they will also help you lease. They will help you with the whole finding tenant and leasing situation so that you can be making money from your apartment while your apartment is appreciating. The pictures that you're seeing right now is from the last apartment that they built it's called spring apartment phase three by the way they wanted me to tell you if you're one of the people that bought this apartment and you are yet to come and claim your apartment please please call them they want to hear from you they want you to collect your keys you know so the new one that they are building right now the location of course like i said is in lakwe a great location the estate is known as eden court and they have two bedroom semi-finished apartments as well as three bedroom semi-finished duplexes with boys quarters now the two bedrooms are 37 thousand dollars while the three 
bedroom duplexes with boys quarters are $62,375. Please call them to know the Naira equivalent because Naira keeps going up and down. If you live in the US and Canada, you know you cannot build a three bedroom duplex apartment with boys quarters so with $62,000. I don't know of other countries, but this is an opportunity. Please call them today if you're interested. 10% of the purchase price is for documentation, survey, and infrastructure. The buildings will be completed in 12 months, but you have to pay 20% down payment for them to start. And then you have eight months to pay 20% of the money. The remaining 60% you don't have to pay until your building, your project is completed. That is when you pay the remaining 60%. So please, please call them today if you're interested. And a huge birthday shout out to one of my fathers watching this show. That is Mr. GD King, popularly known as JK. He loves it when we call him JK. Daddy JK, happy birthday. <laughs> Wishing you many more with all that your heart desires. Daddy turned 63 on Wednesday, but does he not look good? He is looking good, looking fancy. A huge shout out to his wife and his children. They all want us to let you know how much they appreciate you on your birthday. They all want us to say happy birthday to you, my father. So did you guys click the thumbs up button yet? Like seriously, uh -uh, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget, don't forget to subscribe to your girl's channel. I know you are enjoying me. I'm enjoying you too. Be my friend. Let me be your friend. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you yet to subscribe to my channel, I'm watching you on Plasma TV. Press the subscribe button and the bell button. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.